What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you the Phantom 4 Pro Plus Obsidian Edition, which is the drone I fly, and compare it to the newly released Mavic 2 Pro. So I met up with my friend John, who owns the Mavic 2 Pro, and I'm just to keep things simple for this video, I'm gonna to refer to this as the Mavic and this as the Phantom. And we just kind of did some comparisons because I really wanted to see how these two drones held up against each other. And I'm a huge drone fan. I use this professionally all the time. This is my favorite drone. And I wanted to see how it would compare with the Mavic. Okay, so let's start off with price for the comparison. The Phantom costs about $1,800 when this video was filmed. And the Mavic costs about $1,500. And I left a link to the two different drones in the description below so you can take a look and see what the current price is on Amazon as they could have changed when you're watching this video. Okay, so here's a little basic information about the two drones. The Phantom has a field of view of the camera of 84 degrees, while the Mavic has a field of view of 77 degrees. So this one's a little bit narrower, this one's wider. They both have one inch sensors and the cool thing is the Phantom can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second, and the Mavic can also do 4K, but it can only do it at 30 frames per second. So not as good, but very comparable in the kind of just specs right off the box. Image quality is extremely important in drones. So we did a test where we flew both drones up and we pointed at this cool little lake we found. The sun is overhead, so it's kind of coming into the, into the direction of the drone's lens. So it's gonna be a little contrasty and we want to see how each of these drones cameras would hold up. And to really get kind of an a kind of a interesting test, we set each of these drones to complete auto at 30 frames per second so we could see how each of these drones would kind of react out of the box. So what I really noticed from this first shot is that the Phantom is seems like it's much sharper, much more crisp. I kind of like the colors more in auto. While the Mavic compared to the Phantom, I feel like the Phantom just looks a lot better. Now that being said, this is, has, still has an amazing image. I just like this one better. So something that is also really important to me, as well as image quality, is its low light performance. So me and John did another test where we took each drone up about, it was about 20 minutes after sunset. So it's pretty dark in the sky, but there's still some nice light coming in from the sunset. So first off, we brought both drones up, we pointed it directly at where the sun was setting. And as you can see, both of these drones hold up super well in this condition. They both look actually very similar, beautiful image. So low light is actually pretty awesome for both these drones. Now, I really want to push this to the limit and see how well these dro drones would do at even less light. So we flip them both around and face the opposite way of the sunset. So it's super dark. And as you can see, the Phantom, the image looks incredible. It's still super crisp, super clear, colors are great. Unfortunately, the Mavic completely falls apart when the light gets super dark. Um, you can see it's super grainy, it's not the great image. That being said, most people aren't gonna be shooting with that low light, so probably not a huge deal breaker for most people, but for me, this guy in super low light conditions is amazing, this guy not so much. One thing to know too about the different drones is the controller. So this is the Phantom, controller, this is the Mavic's controller. And you can see there's a screen that flips up, super cool. This one, I mean, you have to, you pop this up, you, you can these guys screw on, and then you pop your smartphone in. So I've flown a lot with the Phantom, and this controller is amazing. Super, it's very sturdy in the hands, you get these precise movements, the screen is super bright, which is amazing in broad daylight. That's a huge selling point. This controller is also very cool. I found it to be just a little harder to use than this controller. It was just didn't seem quite as sturdy. Harder to use the turn wheels just seem, did not seem as easy to turn to get these precise moves. And then also it was very difficult when you're using a phone to really see it in broad daylight. John was having some issues when we were filming side by side where I could see my controller perfectly, the screen, and he was having some trouble seeing his iPhone. Something to note about the Phantom, it, which is a downside, is that occasionally if there's strong winds and it's trying to compensate, it will kind of turn like this and then the propellers will get in the shot. So you can see an example of this here. And 
that's because it has a wider field of view and it's catching these propellers. So that's kind of a bummer. Um, to compensate with for that, you can fly backwards and then it kind of tilts that and then you don't see the propellers or you have to adjust your speed. But depending on where the wind's coming from, sometimes you will get these propellers in your shot. So the only really way to fix that is you'd have to go into post and crop in. Now, the Mavic, we, when we were flying side by side when there was some wind, did not have that problem. It's cropped in already with its narrower field of view of lens, but none of the propellers came within the field of view of the image. So that is a pretty nice bonus of the Mavic that the Phantom does not have. Now, something else about the Mavic that is absolutely incredible is its active track. This is a much more advanced drone where it comes to its different sensors. And we actually did a test where I brought up my Phantom and I tracked John running and walking around. And the Phantom had a lot of difficulty, especially when, because we were on a trail and it got confused with the trees. And in our situation, it was just not doing well. That being said, I have had a lot of success with the active track when there's nothing around, it's just flat open, whether it be a beach or the ocean, that kind of active track works amazing. But when you get into a little more complicated scenarios, this guy, not, I mean, good, not great. This active track was incredible. So John was tracking me while I was running and look at this clip where I run behind a tree, I'm not even in frame and it knows that I'm gonna keep going. So it uses artificial intelligence or whatever kind of, I don't even know how they do it, but whatever kind of brain it has in here, it kept tracking me, which is blew my mind. And the shots this guy can get with his active track are just so cool. So Phantom 4 Pro Obsidian Edition does not hold up at all when you're talking about active track. Me and John did a test. We wanted to see which one of these we could set up first. So. Here's a little clip and take a watch. Good luck. Good luck. Hey, don't want to update. What's the phone doing? Oh, you're <laughs> Okay, so after doing all these tests with John, here's my post-game analysis for these two drones. I personally still am a fan of the DJI Phantom 4 Pro Plus Obsidian Edition, and here's why. I like this image quality better. I like having that wider field of view. Also, having a incredible low light capability of shooting some really cool stuff is very important to me, so hey there. Uh, <laughs> is very important to me. And also this screen is just so convenient to be able to just not have to worry about a smartphone. You can just flip it up and the screen is incredible and just start flying. That being said, the Mavic is also incredible. These are two incredible drones. And if you're someone that travels a lot, I mean, this guy folds up super tiny. I mean, just comparing this is so tiny compared to this. So on portability, this guy wins 100%. It's super small. You can just almost practically put this in your pocket. So this much smaller, much better for travel. Image is amazing. So depending on what you're looking for, either of these would be great options for drones to get. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.